call for volunteers. Yeah. So everybody who wanted could just sign up and be a session player or just, you know, help with yeah. stuff. Yeah. So it was for everyone right ahead, but you know, we are the most sociable one. <laughs> a scarf. Okay. <laughs> I think I can help you. Guys, a few announcements. Please don't forget to close the door gently when you exit the room. It really disturbs the speakers. And uh, this room is packed for every talk, so please shift. If you have any space to the left or to the right, please shift and make space so it's easier for other people to find seats. All right? And feel free to tweet and blog about this event. You can also leave feedback for every session on our official website. Thank you very much. Jo, na lepko si ne mašiš se.
A my ho chcete stavit nebo ne? Jenom říct, že je to vlastně v pátky. A on pak je to už začne. Za, za dvě minuty. Co tam šachují teďka, nevíš? Cože? Co tam šachují, nevíš? Já to volám, protože někdo venku jim nejdou zásuvky nebo to, a on jsem to nepobral. Okay, so please sit down, and the next speaker is Vašek Pavlín. Good afternoon, everybody. Already afternoon, it seems. Uh, sorry for um, getting you out of lunch. Uh, you can go after this talk, obviously. Um, so. I will be speaking about Nilekul. Uh, you have heard about uh, Atomic App, Nilekul, ADB uh, in the previous presentations. It's all about containers, right? So my name is Vasek Pavlin. I work for Red Hat as a platform architect. And I'm playing with containers for more than two years now. And it's still fun, because there is still some change that I can investigate. So um, I don't want to go into details about how containers work, because you already heard it a lot. So let's take a look at container packaging. So as I said, no, we are not going to explain Docker again. And I guess that you all tried to run some containers, whatever, if it was Docker or it was LXC or whatever. So uh, I guess you have the basic information. What, was, what is great about containers is the portability. You will just pull some image to your Fedora box, and it will be CentOS image, so we'll run it. That's awesome. Like, you can build on top of any, uh, basically any uh, system and run it on any system, any Linux system. The image itself is pretty simple, because it's just a root file system and some metadata. In, if, in case of, of Docker, it's um, the tarball and some JSON which tells you what is the container, what, do, what is its name, what is its uh, hash, and, and what user should it run, and stuff like that. The problem, if you look at the traditional packaging, it's all about dependencies, right? But containers have a great packaging. You can put a lot of metadata on it, but there is no dependencies. Like all, every container is a standalone unit. Every, every image is a standalone unit. You cannot link them together the you cannot link images together. You can link containers with Docker, uh, somehow connect them, do some routes, but generally you cannot link images together. So we could put something like this into labels and say, hey, this WordPress image requires MariaDB image, but which MariaDB image? How to run that image? So it's not that easy. The other problem of containers and images, uh, of, of Docker images, is that everybody repackages. So this is, this is a screenshot from uh, October last year, and it was 454 images at Docker Hub of MariaDB. If you put MariaDB in a search, it gave you a number like this. And this is from today, uh, the number. It's 589. In a few months, we 
edit like 130 images with MariaDB. How is it possible that everybody needs a different image for MariaDB? It's still the same database, maybe some versions, right? But maybe some configuration, but it's a runtime thing. So how come we, we need so many images? Because it's fun to start from scratch and learn something. And there is no documentation. So you, you have no idea how to run the thing. And if there is documentation, it's, it's pretty long and it's, it's hard to read it and you don't want to read it, right? So these are images and containers. But then there is multi-container applications. Like you can see that there is some nice application and if you need more power, you will just few containers to your engine space, right? And it will just go faster. Let's say that multi-container applications are two plus containers. And what you want from that is you want to operate them as a single unit. You don't want to run every single container and check um, if it's live, if it's healthy. You want to operate it as a single unit. And you want to reuse existing components because you don't want to be here and you, want to, you don't want to repackage everything again. So how does it work uh, with, what does it mean operate uh, an application as a single unit. So let's say I want to deploy my GitLab somewhere. So with containers, it's like GitLab container, PostgreSQL, and Redis, which will have Redis master and Redis slave, which, is, which can be and mostly is the same image, but have different runtime parameters. So this is the graph that will basically appear when you try to run it, uh, for example, in Kubernetes. And I want to do this. I want to do atomic run, for example, GitLab. And I want to then do atomic stop GitLab or restart or whatever. And the reusability. Um, so as I said, there is a lot, of a lot of images that serve the same purpose. They are a bit different. But if, I want, if I'm creating an application, what I want to do is to say, hey, here is my directory with my application, with my uh, Docker images for my application. And I want to add new dependency. And the dependency will be PostgreSQL server and Redis, like in GitLab example. And then in the directory, for example, or somewhere else, I want to ju just do atomic run my app. And it will start all the, all the dependencies, all the containers. And I want to have a library of these so that I don't have to search them somehow weirdly. I just want to know here's the place that I can use all the images and I will know that they are maintained and they, are well, they, they, they will behave well. So this is multi-container application. And then you go where to deploy it. So you have orchestrations. Uh, right now, with orchestrations, you have a lot of choices. You have OpenShift. It's built, it's built on the Kubernetes, but you can use Kubernetes directly. There is Terraform, Mesos, Compose, many, many. There is no winner yet. Uh, we at Red Hat like Kubernetes. Um, that's why OpenShift uses them. Uh, so we hope that will be the winner. But generally, there is no winner yet, and still everyone tries to figure out the best format how to deploy the application. And if you want to deploy the application right now, the best user experience you can get is a very, very long readme. And that readme will tell you, do this, and then start this container, then change this configuration, and then do something else. And if you go through all these 20, 25 steps, and all goes well, your application is running. But Every single orchestration has its own format for, for metadata, and these are separated from the images, from the actual applications. So how do you distribute them? So you pr probably do curl some file, some YAML file, uh, and you will keep control that file, and it will start up some containers. But if you have no idea what is in that, you have to investigate more, you have to read it, you have to change some values, and then you maybe have, a, a, have an application. The problem is that how do you distribute it in other way? It's, it's a plain text, so how do you distribute it? You will have a Git repo, you will send it through mail. That's not very uh, useful. That's why containers are now popular because Docker created a good distribution uh, method for containers. And another problem or another scope of containers is that there are multiple environments that you want to deploy to. So you can have very enterprisey environment where everything fits together 
And then you can have something like this, which is my development machine. Everything is messed up. Uh, everything is like halfway, halfway done. Uh, maybe it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Even there is no reason why it shouldn't work. But generally, you have many different environments where you want to deploy. And you can have various workflows, like here, where you have development to test, to staging, to beta, to production. And then you might have something like this, where you skip staging and beta. How do you, how do you describe the application that needs to go through all these stages? And, and how, to, how, how do you change parameters? Because you have to change parameters. Like here, from the fabricator Kubernetes example, where they say, hey, here's some random value, and you need to change it to make your application work. Um, which, if you have the 20 pages of README, and then it contains things like this, you probably screw something up, and your application will not start, and you will be completely pissed off with containers. And then NewLocal comes. So what is NewLocal? It's just a specification. It's just a document. So why do I need new specification for these if all various orchestrations uh, already specify something? I will get to that. It's independent on container engine. So it doesn't tell you that you have to use Docker or Nspawn or LXC. It just describes your application. It describes the graph for your application. So as I showed the graph for GitLab, you can describe that you have a GitLab application and it depends on uh, Postgres and then depends on Redis and the Redis component then contains two other applications basically, two other components that is master and slave. And you can parameterize. So here is the snippet from, from some NewLocal file and it says that there are two parameters, image and host, host port. Uh, it has some description and it can, has, it can have some default values. So if you want to just try it, you just deploy the application, and it will use the default values. If you want to change it, you can. And you can restrict the parameters, because you want to be sure that the port is number, for example. And they are then basically uh, uh, substituted in the artifacts, like YAML files for Kubernetes, with a simple uh, variables, uh, dollar sign variable replacement. And then there are answer files. So you have these YAML files that are uh, marked with, um, with the variables. And you want to provide the values to the application. So this is the answer file for the application that I showed. And here is the image that uses CentOS HTTPD. For some reason, for your new version of the application, you want to use Fedora. And you want to change port. So you will just change it. And when you deploy, this application will be taken in account. And it will be used. And the parameters will be changed according to this, uh, <clears throat> this file. And another thing is that, as I said, there are many orchestrators. We call them providers in Ulecool. And these basically are, if you implement the specification, these are the plugins that will then deploy your application to a specific orchestration. So right now. There is an implementation Atomic App. I will get to that. And it supports Kubernetes, Docker, OpenShift, and Mesos, Marathon. Yeah. Um, so you can specify basically as many, as many orchestrations as you want. You will provide the configuration for a specific orchestration. You can make them inherit uh, the configuration if it's, if it's common for multiple, um, for multiple orchestrations. And these will be used and parameterized to deploy your application. Yeah, I no. already uh, explained this. The specification is basically, uh, the, if, if you want to create your application, you just write a YAML, another YAML file. And this YAML file is very open, so you can add more information, and you can probably create some other use cases uh, out of it. So you can add metadata. You can add some other pieces, like how to build the images and stuff like that. So, it's easy to extend, and your, your tooling can use it for various different things. And this is how to contribute to the specification. It's on GitHub. There is an IRC channel, and there is a mailing list. So if you want to contribute, you can quite easily. And then there is impl implementation of the specification. Because if you have just a YAML file, and you don't, you don't have anything that can work with it, you are kind of screwed. So you need some tool that will take, the, take uh, the 
application definition and deploy it and run it. So it's basically Atomic App, it's a new local app installer. It runs in container uh, and it has provider plugins, as I said, you can deploy to various orchestration orchestrations. And there is a single command, as I showed before, Atomic Run something will let you to run the application uh, basically with single command. It's based on Docker, so we use Docker uh, as a packaging format basically and uh, as, a, as a runtime for the Atomic app. So uh, it's not, it's not uh, the only way how to do it, but it's the easiest right now. It resolves dependencies. As I said, the problem of containers is that you cannot resolve dependencies easily. So it basically takes, takes the new local specification, goes through the graph, pulls all the needed components, which the component is basically another new local application, puts it all together and deploys it to an orchestrator. It's, um, there's a few steps, like fetch, it will download all the things, then you can install, which will con cons construct them and run. Uh, provider plugins, initially, they used just the shell out to, to, uh, shelled out to uh, commands that you will, would be using if you want to deploy Docker containers or Kubernetes pods. Uh, right now, it has been all re-implemented, so it uses API directly, which is much better because you don't have the version clashes of Docker client in an image and Docker server on the, on the host and various crazy things that can happen. And as I said, it's, it's packaged in a container. So you basically deploy your containerized application from a container. Uh, so we need more layers, right? Like Onion or Shrek or something. Uh, there are a bunch of Docker files which bases the Atomic app on, on various um, OSs or, or distributions. And as I said, it's a, it's a self-execution container. So if you if you want to run an application, first you can just use Atomic App to see what, what it does by looking at help, just by running this image. Uh, then if you build on top of it, uh, you will just use it as a, as a base image for your application, which contains the, the artifacts, the YAML files for orchestrators, and the new local file. And if you then run it, it will automatically find the content and, and deploy it. Uh, basically like this. With Atomic, you can use labels. Uh, so this is the run label. I think it's, 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 it has changed uh, since I created this slide, uh, but it will be very similar. So you basically run the container. It knows that there is a directory slash Atomic app, and it will look at the directory and will start, start the deployment. Uh, so instead of uh, you having to come up with some way or installing some tooling, you will just pull the container and do Atomic Run. And again, it's same as for Nulecool. It's, 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 it's on GitHub. It's, uh, it has a mailing list, container tools, which is a team that is working on that. Um, and it has an IRC channel, and, or it shares an IRC channel with Nulecool. And there is another thing, and that's called ADB, Atomic uh, Developer Bundle, or Development Bundle, I'm not sure. And it's basically a toolbox. You have heard about it from Colin earlier. And it's a, it's a great thing because if you want to develop containerized application, the biggest problem I have always when I start is that I need to deploy Kubernetes or OpenShift or something somewhere that, so that I can test my application. So this tool uh, or this, uh, this project allows you to run these orchestrations, various orchestrations easily uh, in Vagrant Box. So what you can do is just download Vagrant file or git clone the repository, do Vagrant up, SSH in, and you have running Kubernetes. You can download different Vagrant file, SSH in, and you have running uh, OpenShift v3 origin. Uh, and it works. I've tested it last week. Uh, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, there is a lot of documentation based on ADB. It suggests how to use it, how to create uh, applications, the containerized applications and uh, allows you to easily use the Vagrant files because there is how to install Vagrant and all these, all these things that you need to start. So 
basically what was the what was the purpose of this talk to summarize it I wrote it down on my blog um, four things that Nulical tries to solve is the parameterization so if you need to take your application and move it somewhere else you will have to change some parameters uh, some environment variables in containers and, and all these things so this is what Nulicals will help you with you can define the parameters for the application and the user of the application will be able to easily change these parameters reusability if you take a bunch of containers and you don't know what they are and how to use them, you cannot use them, basically. So Nulical adds a layer on top of those and lets you to define how to use the container easily and then, and then basically create a library or something that will, uh, that will serve you of, as, as the components of, for, for new applications. It lets you to take care of multiple orchestrations at once, so you don't have to, uh, you, you don't have, to um, have a various Git repos for Kubernetes and OpenShift and, and Marathon. You can all package it into a single image that will run. Uh, that when you run it, it will deploy to a given provider. And it solves the distribution of these artifacts. So if you want to distribute YAML files, you can do that with Git, but it's not uh, always convenient. You want to do it in a single way. So if you, dip, if you distribute your application as Docker containers, you want to probably distribute uh, your configuration for, um, for orchestrations as a Docker container too. So what you should do now, uh, you should probably read about it more. Uh, there are, it's, it's all under Project Atomic. So if you go to projectatomic.io, you will see a lot of fancy demos there, blog posts, and things like that. You should play that, so you just do Vagrant up with the Vagrant file that I have a link in my slides to, and you can try it, and you probably should contribute because you have the experience with deploying and developing the containerized applications, so you might have a, uh, have a word in how it should be done here. And what you, do, what you should do, not right now, but just after, basically after, uh, not after the talk, but this afternoon, sorry. Uh, Tomáš Král uh, is having a workshop how to use Nulical and Atomic App, and he will tell you how to package all the stuff into uh, Nulicals and how to use that and how it all works. Uh, I wanted to show you a demo, but my Vagrant box failed, and I was not able to download the, all the images again on, this, on, the, on the connection here. So I'm sorry, I cannot give you a demo of, of Atomic App and Nulical. And that's it. Uh, only thing that I can... I can demo is basically the um, is basically the vagrant box. So I have a vagrant file here that is downloaded from the ADB GitHub repository, and you can see that there is some shell script. That what it does is that it starts and sets up the Kubernetes. It's not very hard to do, um, so we can try to start it and see if it all works. And I wanted to show that uh, Kubernetes is one thing, but then there is OpenShift, and to start OpenShift is not that easy. Like, to start it, it's very easy. But to, to, to set up it properly is, is not that easy. But these guys, uh, the Container Tools team, uh, make it very easy for you. So with a single command, you can run OpenShift and deploy uh, S2I images and all that, all that things. And there is also... Uh, a marathon which is deployed, deployed uh, through Ansible in the Vagrant box. So I think that's, that, that's pretty cool. And here we go. Um, it started. So if I just log in, Qtutla get notes. So I will see that my local, host, local, local Kubernetes uh, node is running. And I can see that I actually tried to start it, but it failed because it couldn't, uh, it couldn't download the images. So maybe, maybe you will see that uh, at, at Tomáš's um, presentation uh, workshop. It will probably work for him better than for me. OK, so if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yes, Colin.
status of all the other ones in popularity versus Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. and so I guess the question is, you know, have we gotten many bug reports or like what are the challenges? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So uh, what is the status of other providers and if there are any feedback on using other providers? Um, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure because I wasn't following uh, the, the issues lately. So um, the status is that it should all work. Um, and it was basically, the OpenShift is a very good example. Like you can deploy to Kubernetes, you can deploy to OpenShift at the same time. But if you want to add more to that, you need some other files that would be, wouldn't be useful for Kubernetes. That's why you, right, at, this, at that moment you need two different ways how to deploy things. Uh, then there is Docker provider, which is basically for testing, because if you don't have your YAML files for Kubernetes yet, you want to try it with Docker if your application will go up and if you link it together, if it, work, if it works. And then there is a Mesos provider that Tomáš wrote. Uh, I haven't tried that. I have no idea. Uh, I haven't tried Mesos at all, so I don't know. But I guess it works. I don't know if you have any, uh, any feedback for, for these providers. Yeah, so Kubernetes and OpenShift are the most used providers. And I know that there is integration with OpenShift already. So if you do OC new app and provide a new local to it, it will start the, uh, you don't have to use the Atomic app. You can use OC command, OpenShift command uh, to start the application, to create the application inside, inside um, OpenShift directly. So there is, there is a work in progress on this integration, but I think it works right now pretty well. So basically, uh, basically the question is if we can use Nulacal to modularize Fedora. Uh, basically using containers to modularize Fedora is one of the approaches that people are looking at, looking at. So creating these containers in a way that they can be reused is a goal for that. So you cannot just ask every, every user to build their own containers and create them. So you would need some way how to describe the container so that it can run easily on Fedora. Uh, I know there was some work uh, on Rollkit, if you heard about this project, it basically lets you create, uh, set, set your machine to some role. So for example, uh, domain name server, no domain name server, uh, IPA server, uh, the, um, web server, uh, various roles. Um, and it, there was some work going on to integrate Nulecle in it so that you can either deploy natively as RPM packages and some setup, or you can deploy in containers via Nulecal. So this is one thing that, that we are looking into, and it might be a, a good case uh, how, to, how to containerize Fedora more and how to modularize it more. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, it's it's Nulecal. Uh, if you want to, I can, I can probably go back to the first slide um, so that you can see, see it written. It's, it's taken from Simpsons. <clears throat> it's, uh, when the new local leaves its nest, that's where it all starts for atoms and, and things like that. About what? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, will we have registry for Nulecle? So it uses Docker containers. So any Docker registry is basically registry for Nulecles. The only thing that is missing is some kind of metadata servers uh, for registry that will let you to search through these uh, without having to specify a specific tag. So right now you have to tag your image, and that's the only way how to search in, in Docker registries. So if you want to use more metadata, you will have to have some metadata service. I did some proof of concept that basically lets you to list, uh, list all the new locals in some library. Uh, it was based on Git and registry. Uh, there are plans for that, for, for, some, for some kind of index and re new local registry in CentOS, uh, as far as I know. And it, it is possible. 
Um, though I, I don't think that anybody put a lot of effort in that right now. So the distribution part uses normal Docker registry. If you want to list it and, and go through it and see some details, you would have to implement something on top of it that would analyze the files and, and put them in some database or something. Okay, anything else? Yes. About what? Security patching. So um, I don't think that this is. It's the question is sorry. The question is uh, what what I think about security patching of containers. Um, I think it's needed, though I don't think that Nulecol will basically help you with that, because you would have to. What you want to probably do is to take a look at the host, see what containers are there, and see if those are the latest version that you need to use to be secure. Uh, so if you already deployed your application, you can get some kind of notification that there is outdated containers. I think there are some work going on um, around this in Project Atomic as well. So Atomic status or something will give you the idea. Uh, but but I don't think that we can somehow help it here. Like you can you can say we can we can add some versioning or more more specific versioning uh, to the YAML files to Nulecol files, um, but it would require other tooling to to basically restart the containers and redeploy the application um, with the latest containers. Right. Uh, so if the question is whether we only use a tag for dependencies or if we can use uh, something like I require database and I don't care what, which one it is. Um, that's a good question. We right now, uh, the dependencies can be only prov um, specified by the tag, by, the, uh, by basically by link to another new local component. But I think we already thought about it, how we could, how we could do that. But that thing would require the metadata service that uh, there was the question before, if we can have some registry for new locals. Because if you cannot um, investigate the, 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 the metadata of the application, you cannot then say, OK, this provides database. So first thing, we would have to have the library, the real library and metadata server that would provide this information. And then we can then we can do something like this, but it's, uh, it's it would be a great use case to have this. Okay, I don't think there are any more questions. So thank you a lot. Uh, sorry for a short talk.
Раз, раз. Два, два. Рама, рама. Дэн Уинчи. Как ходка не четкая, как всегда. Дэн Уинчи. 